welcome back to another Scratch Course Concepts in SlaySEA.com and today we are going to be looking at proportion, the concept of proportion. So as always you want to welcome the Holy Spirit and we want to ask him to open your mind, guide your hands as you go through this and to help you to absorb all that you are going to learn like a sponge. So we pray in the name of the Father, Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill us with your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding. Help us to remember what we are studying and to retain. Please bless our hard work with success. In Jesus' name, Amen. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Okay, so great. So we are going to be talking about proportion today. And the first thing we want to talk about is what is a proportion? Well, simply put, proportion has to do with create is basically proportions are very helpful to help you find a missing value from known values so if you know about equivalent fractions and how to create and if you understand equivalent fractions then that makes proportions so much easier so we want to get into proportion silly so the first thing like i want to illustrate with an example suppose it takes one hour to bake a pie. Bake four pies. How many hours? Will it take to bake 16 pies? Okay, so this is a simple exam example of proportion. I'm going to get at it now. The first thing I want to do is create the steps in solving a proportion. So the first thing, create an equation. Now to do this, we are going to learn how to convert this information as a, or express it as a fraction. So it takes one hour to bake four pies. So I am going to put one over four, which is like a fraction. And I need to find out how many hours will it take to make 16 pies. So I'm going to write what is the known and I'm also going to leave, I'm going to write a letter for what is the unknown. I'm going to use N. You can use X, you can use a shape. If you're not comfortable looking at the letters, use a shape, right? So we have now created an equation. What does this equation mean? Well, the value of on this side is equal to the value on that side. Now, if you are, once I put it this way, you can clearly see to solve for n, we need to establish a relationship. So, the relationship with these numbers, let me just write in this. When you create equivalent fractions, you know that whatever, is, whatever you did to the top must also be done to the bottom. So, there are two ways that you could solve this, right? We're going to go through the proportional method first. So the, you can say to create an equation, step one. Step two, simply cross multiply. Now what does this mean? You multiply across. So you will multiply and you're going to write it down as another equation. So you're going to have one by 16 is equal to n times 4. Now to solve this, which is our third step, we are going to simplify. Now in this case, to simplify, it's a little easy because we have 1 here. So you just say 16 is equal to 4 times n or is equal to 4n. And now we are going to solve for the unknown. Okay, so if 16 is equal to 
equal to 4n, 1n or just n is equal to 16 divided by 4. Another way that we could look at this is, equal, is to divide both sides. By the number which comes before the unknown. So in other words, we are going to be dividing 16 by 4 is equal to 4 and divided by 4. Now a little more advanced maths, but you can follow along because it's easy. You actually do these steps so quickly without even realizing it. I'm only simply breaking it down for you. So you can simplify this now. 4 it could be divided by 4. 16 divided by 4 is? 4. And then we'll say, okay, well, we could simplify this side. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 24 is 1. So we left here with 1n. So 4 is equal to 1n, or which is equal to 4 is equal to n. Now there is another way that you could have also done this. Not so. You could have said, so this is the cross multiplication method. Now the good thing about math is that there's so many, there's usually more than one way that you could solve any any sum right so the first one you want to say is well you could say using the equivalent fractions approach you could say well whatever was done on the bottom was also done on the top so 4 by something is equal to 16 and 4 by 4 is 16 so you know Let's give me a second. So you know you have to multiply this one by 4 to get 4 hours. It's essentially the same thing, but basically you can look at both methods to see which one you prefer. So I just want to go over the cross multiplication method again, right? So the first thing you want to do is create an equation. When you create an equation, establish any re a relationship between sums. Then you would cross multiply and cross multiply means is that you multiply values which are opposite to each other in the um, opposite, to each, opposite to the equal sign from each other. The next one you want to simplify so and then eventually you'll solve for the unknown or you could solve for whatever the unknown factor. Now one thing to note is that um, if, you, if this method is confusing Please refer to this method where you, again, you establish the fractions and then you determine what is the common factor that must be done to both the numerator and the denominator. But what is so important that you put this in the same order because for on each side. So, hours over pies, hours over pies. Because if it was switched on either side, it would not be an example of a portion and you will not be able to solve the sum. Okay, so they, um, that's by, now this is just an example of direct proportion. Now I'm going to give you an illustration of what is indirect proportion. Okay, so there are actually two types of proportion. We have direct proportion and we have indirect proportion. So what you need to know is the difference between the two. Okay, so both of them establish a relationship between two numbers. The, the topic which is most frequently tested is direct proportion, but we're also going to touch a little bit on indirect proportion. Okay, so with indirect proportion, there's what we call a positive relationship between the values. So you remember in the sum just now, you would say, okay, there's one hour, four pies. Now, in direct proportion, it means that every time an increase on this side causes an increase on this side. So, if you remember, we looked it out as four over 16, right? So, these two are increasing. So, an increase in one term results in an increase in the next term, right? So, in direct proportion, is where it is an opposite it's kind of like a seesaw so just think about this as a minute for a seesaw right if you if there's a decrease on this side 
there's an increase on that side. And let me give you a little example. It takes two men to um, 15 hours to paint a house. How much um, time or how many hours does it take for three men to paint the house? So let's look at this one, right? Now remember I said that there is going to be a, a relationship where a decrease on one side causes an increase in the next side. So let's put it into perspective here. So the first thing we're going to do is create an equation. So we have two men, 15 hours, right? And then now we are asked to find for three men. How many hours? So we don't know how many hours, so we're going to put that as n equals any letter again, right? When you are doing indirect proportion, you are actually going to multiply the terms a little differently. So you're going to find the total hours. So total hours, which is equal to 2 by 15, which is equal to 30. And then now you're going to divide or find the average time, which is equal to 30 divided by 3, which is equal to 10 hours. So you will see that when we increase our number of men to 3, time went down. Now common sense will say that it will actually, you know, like the old saying, Many hands make light work, so when you have more persons working on a task, you would be able to finish something faster. So now we're going to look at a couple possible questions to solve direct proportion. I hope that you um, understand the topic a little better as you go through this crash course, so that any time you see a, a, um, a question in proportion, you know how to handle it now. Okay, so we have 2016 possible question number 23. Students of Standard 4 planted oak row for their CAC project. If the plants increased in height by 0.25 meters every week, how many weeks would it take for the plants to grow to a height of 1 meter? So again, this is proportion. The first thing you want to do is identify the topic because once you identify the topic, you will start to remember the steps that you take. Right? So step 1, let's establish the relationship. So one week the plants grow 0 0.25 meters which is equal to n over 1 meter All right so in this case you have to solve for the number of weeks so let us first of all convert this to centimeters right so we're going to say that one week is equal to 25 centimeters. We want to find n, which is the number of weeks, and it will take to go to 100 centimeters. So we're going to look at our both ways, right? So the first thing is that we are going to establish a relationship. So what do you do to 25 so that it becomes 100? Well, you multiply it by 4. So 25 by 4 is equal to 1. 100 meters so it means that whatever you do to the bottom because it is an equivalent fraction that we are creating you will also do to the top so one week by four is equal to four weeks so n here is equal to four or the answer is equal to four weeks now let's solve it using the cross multiplication method so we're going to write back the equation we have one week over 25 centimeters is equal to n over 100. We could cross multiply. So we're going to say n 
by 25 is equal to 1 by 100. So again, first of all, let's go through these steps because I like to do these things step by step. Let's create an equation. Step 2, cross multiply. 3, simplify. 12 for n. Okay? So we're now in, this is step 1, step 2. Let's look at solving now. So n by 25 is equal to 1 by 100. We know anything, anything multiplied by 1 gives you the same number. So n by 25 is equal to 100. Now to solve for n, means that we have to get all our numbers on this side of the equal sign. Now to do that, we are going to divide both sides by the number by 25, right? So when we divide by 25, we cross out these and we just have n. So that is how you, you transfer the 25 to the next side. N is equal to 100 over 25. And you know now that N is equal to 4 weeks. So I have actually just used both methods to explain how you can solve 2016 number 23 um, sandwich test proportion. Okay, so next one is 2003 13th paper number 23. Jack tried to climb 20 meters up a coconut tree. For every 5 meters he climbed, he fell back 2 meters. How far up the tree would he have reached after falling 3 times? Now I love this sum because it's a sum that shows reasoning and it touches a little bit on the topic of proportion but it is slightly different. But we're going to look at it anyway. So let's go over the steps again. So when you are... Solve a proportion. The first thing you want to do is establish the equation. So let's look at it. So we really don't need this first part here, right? We're going to start from here. So after 5 meters, he climbed, he fell back too. So for every 5 meters climbed, I'm going to use an arrow, he fell 2 meters, right? Now this one is a bit different, but we're going to continue. How far up the tree would he have reached after falling three times? Now if he fell three times, it means that the total distance he fell would have been 2 by 3, which is 6 meters. Now whatever we do on one side, we do on the next. So we multiply by 3 on this side as well to keep the equation balanced. Because remember you're working with an equivalent fraction. So we have 15 by 3, with 5 by 3, which is 15 meters. So if he climbed 15 meters in all, but he fell back down in total of 6 meters, to find the total distance he reached, we would minus. So it's 15 meters minus 6 meters, which is equal to 9 meters. So for this one, um, they gave you the relationship and you have to find the, um, you have to use that to solve this question. So I like sums like these because it shows you how you could use proportion in a number of different contexts. So let's go to the next one. So 2009, question 31, a book has 60 pages. Michael reads three pages in two minutes. How long will it take him to finish the book? So what's up, are we looking at again? Create proportion. So that's first step, create an equation. So this is what we're looking at. He reads three pages in two minutes. We can assume that that rate will continue 
all the way until he reads all 60 pages. Now, when we create it like this, we see that we don't know the number of minutes and we're going to represent it with N. So the first thing we did was we created the equation. Step two, cross multiply. So we're going to multiply 60 by 2, which is equal to N by 3. Right? So 60 by 2 is equal to 120. So step 3, simplify, is equal to 3N. Remember, we now have to divide both sides by 3. Right? So, when we do that, we'll cancel out this side, and then on this side, we get 120 divided by 3, which is equal to 40 minutes. Let's look at it using the other method, where we use equivalent methods, right? So, I'm going to write it back over. 3 pages is equal to 60 pages. 2 minutes is equal to N. Using this method, we determine that whatever is done on top is also done on the bottom. So, 3 multiplied by 20 is equal to 60. If we multiply the top by 20 to get 60, we need to multiply the bottom also by 20. And then we will get 2 by 20, which is equal to 40. So, I've just showed you two simple methods that you could use to work out some sort of proportion. So, in 2008, number 43, we have a diagram. DVD sale. Buy five and get one free. Alright, DVDs cost $100 each. I mean, sorry, DVDs cost $10 each. The sum tells us that Daniel purchased $100 worth of DVDs, part A. How many free DVDs did he get? So if he purchased a hundred dollars, we're going to work it out using the proportional method. So one DVD is equal to ten. One DVD is equal to ten, right? Using proportion, he paid a hundred dollars. Right now, remember whatever we do, but we don't know how many DVDs he got. Right, remember whatever we do on the bottom, we must also do on the top. So, the simpler way we can say, well, if we multiply the bottom by 10, we also multiply the top by 10. So, here 1 by n is equal 1 by 10 is equal to n, n is equal to 10. Let's look at how using the cross multiplication method. Right, so we have 1 by 10 is equal to n over 100. Cross multiplication means that 100 dollars, 100 is equal to, um, sorry, 10 by n. Right? Now, why did I, and then now we're going to solve for n. To solve for n, we divide both sides by 10. So, we cross out these 10s, 100 divided by 10 is equal to 10 DVDs. So he would have bought 10 DVDs. If he bought 10 DVDs, it means that he would have gotten 2 free. Because for on a way that we can look at that, 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. So he would have received 2 free DVDs. Part B. How many DVDs did he get altogether? Four hundred dollars. So we already know he got ten plus two, which is equal to twelve DVDs. All right. Part C. Daniel's friend also bought DVDs on sale. He received thirty DVDs. How much money did he spend? So again, we're going to create our equation. We start off with one by ten is equal to. Now in this case, we know the number of DVDs which is 30, but we don't know how much money he spent. Oh, by the way, sorry. All right. So for this one, Daniel's friend also bought DVDs and said he received 30 DVDs. How much money did he spend? 
Now to work this out, you need to find out so the total number of DVDs is equal to 30. Out of which he would have received some free and he would have bought some. So the first thing you need to determine is how many DVDs did he buy. So we could do a little reasoning. We could say, well, if he bought five by if he bought five, if he um And to solve this, right, we're going to divide to find out how many sets. So if you bought 30 DVDs, right, and they tell you if you buy five and get one free, it means that in all, you could say like he's buying sets of six, right? So number in set, number of DVDs in set is equal to six. Therefore, number of sets is equal to 30 divided by 6 which is equal to 5. Now what does this mean? That if he bought 5 sets of DVDs, it means that in all he would have bought 5 by 5 which is equal to 25. He would have bought five sets of DVDs, which means it is 25 DVDs, which also means that he would have then received five free, right? Okay? Now, if he bought 25 DVDs and the cost of DVD is equal to $10, then the amount spent, the amount spent is equal to 25 by 10, which is equal to $250. Now, sometimes this, I've only seen it come up like once up to 2017, but it comes fairly often in your practice test, right? So look out for it. The way students make the most mistakes is determining the number of sets of DVDs that he would have bought. So once you work that out, remember, take these sums step by step. Okay, so for 2006, number 25, Mrs. Roberts packs lunch for the pupils in her class. For every lunch box, she puts two chocolate biscuits and three sandwiches. Altogether, she uses 96 sandwiches. How many chocolate biscuits did she use? So step one, create the equation. So we have two chocolate biscuits for three sandwiches. Which is, and then we, look, we know that at the end, she uses 96 sandwiches. So we need to find the number of chocolate biscuits, which we represent at N. You know what to do right now. So the first way I'm going to show you is using the equivalent fractions method. So if, well, if you divide 96 by 3, you get 32. So you would have, if you would have multiplied 3 by 32 to get 96, you also need to multiply the top by 32 to get n. So n is equal to 32 times 2, which is equal to 64. Great. Let's look at the cross multiplication method now. So cross multiplication method, we divide across. And I'm just going to erase this for now, not to confuse you. Right? So it means you're going to multiply across the equation side. So you're going to get 3n is equal to 96 by 2. Let's look at what 96 by 2 is. 96 by 2 is equal to 6 twos are 12. 9 twos are 18 and 1 is 90 which is 192. So we have 3n is equal to 192. We're going to solve for n by dividing both sides by 3. So we say we cross out these three because when 3 divided by 3 gives you 1, so we get 1n. And then when you divide this, we say that, we say 19 divided by 3 is 6, we know 1, 3 into 12 is 4. So we still get 64 chocolate biscuits. So our answer here is equal to 64 chocolate biscuits. Now, I just want to go through one more with you, and we're looking at it right below. Now, also what I want to point out is that 
when you do enough past papers, and it's important to go through these specimen papers, especially since the format of the exam has changed from 2019, you will notice trends and patterns. So in all the questions that we did today, except for one, proportion questions came around question 23. Most of the questions were 23. And that helps you to sort of anticipate or plan the paper. Now, I'm not saying that it is always going to be around number 23, but you can look out for it because it comes every couple of years, right? So let's look at 2005, number 23. For every $3 that Gayatri saves, her sister, RT, saves $4. At the end of one month, RT saves $20. How much does Gayatri save in the same time? So first step, establish the relationship. So we know that $3 for Gayatri to her sister, RT, is $4. At the end, we're going to establish a relationship. At the end, RT saves $20. Now, we don't know how much Gayatri saves, so we're going to put that as N. We're going to look at it both methods, right? We could say that if we multiply 4 by 5 to get 20, we could also multiply the top. So, we have 3 by 5, which is equal to 15. N is equal to 15. And I want to just go over cross multiplication method one last time. So, the same thing, right? When we cross multiply... We get 4n is equal to 3 by 20, which is equal to 4n is equal to 60. We want to have n alone on this side, so we divide both sides by 4 and we cross it out. And then we get 60 divided by 4 is equal to 15. Same thing. Okay, so I hope that this clears up any problems you may still be having in proportion. And I'm really here to help you. Remember, you can stop the video at any time and go through the sums, work out the sums. Or maybe you did not need to go through these explanations. Maybe you already knew it. Um, the next step is for you to go onto the Slay Crash Course in Proportions. And then you'll check me back after for your results. So we started with a prayer. And God is the beginning and the end of all things. So we're going to end with a simple prayer. And this is a prayer that I always end with. So say it with me. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. We are under the blood of the Lamb, safe and secured from Satan's blood. No weapon formed against us shall stand, for we are under the blood of the Lamb. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Okay, so stay safe, keep working, keep moving on. You are awesome, and I hope that you slay S-E-A. I am here to help you succeed, learn, achieve, and yield. Great results. Bye for now.